Taylor were, were particularly supportive of Charles Taylor, the former um, um, prime minister of uh, what, Sierra Leone? Is it Sierra Leone, right? Right, it's Sierra Leone? Sierra Leone, right? That's where he's from, right? Okay, okay, I just want to make sure make sure it's Sierra Leone is the country, West Africa. Um, there's a program on PBS currently, and they might be playing this up at their at their website. It's called um, Neil Ferguson's, I think the a documentary kind of about civilization, the West, the Westerners and the Resterners, or the West and the rest of us talking about civilization. And and it's interesting. In fact, in the last part of it, there's a brief brief mention of his imperial majesty in connection with um, English fashion or, or, or the clothing. It's not very brief mention, but focuses more on the emperor of Japan. But that particular documentary, though we have issues with it, it still gives a, a very interesting perspective of what we see still working out. And what it is is history. History it's not so much about the facts, really, when we are presented them. It's about the narrative. And this is about the kangaroo, the so-called world court, this kangaroo court, right? If you recall, when um, Bush was going into Iraq, right, um, Bush had said, um, you know, he made some statements, the neocons made some statements that we don't really want to, you know, have to be tried by some judges from some African country or some third world country. How, 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 how undignified would that be for the great white brotherhood, so-called um, the European, Anglo-American, and European brotherhood of the so-called New World, quote, end quote, order, if the human rights agenda was to be fulfilled in spirit and in truth. What we see is a, is a mockery here. We see um, Charles Taylor, right, Liberia, Sierra Leone, that whole conflict zone over there. We see him being sentenced today for 50 years. And 50 years, get this, get this in a British court. Is this a way of lining up Mugabe? Remember, these stories have been put out here, and we have these kind of um, people who are speaking above their pay grade, like, for example, Nas, for, for example. Yes, he might travel, go around the world, but he, he's definitely not, like, one of our ambassadors, really. Maybe if you're just in a little narrow-minded hip-hop zone, maybe he's your ambassador in that sense. But, you know, he's spoken, like, about Mugabe and innocent bodies and, like, trying to make this guy worse than Saddam or worse than Hitler. And so we get a lot of lost sheeple buying into this rhetoric and even helping this narrative. Now, when we got wind of the Charles Taylor thing, you know, we, we saw it kind of coming. We, we were paying attention to it, but, you know, there was just a, a couple of clips, news clips here and there. Now, why do I feel this is so important? First of all, there's an article my earthly father gave me a couple of years ago, and I want you to get the clip of this. I think this is from the New York Times. I believe this is the New York Times article. Yeah, yeah, this is New York Times uh, magazine. Um, I think it is uh, 1993. And there's an article right here. Let me show you this right here. It says, Colonialism, right? Colonialism's back, right? Colonialism is back and not a moment too soon. This is a very, very, this, this is a very interesting article right here. In fact, this article right here, we can almost call this article a, a mission um, statement, a prospectus, in a sense, a, a general thesis of why the Europeans need to so-called get over their white guilt and look at the global situation and take charge of it, in particular, take charge of Africa. If anything, 
this whole New World Order thing is all about Africa. And, and the shame of it is that so many um, Negroes, Blacks, and Coloreds are like what Morpheus said in The Matrix. You know, they're so inanely, you know, like ignorant and just unawares and plugged into the system that they will fight and they will die for this same ungodly and oppressive system, this whole world system. You hear a lot of these um, documentaries out there talking about the New World Order, right? Mm -hmm. I know I always present this to you because this is always a reminder. This is the most powerful talisman, right? This is the most powerful magic in the so-called God-awful world, this present world system. This right here, the so-called a dollar bill, the one dollar bill actually, is more powerful than the hundred dollar bill, even though you'll think it has spending power because you you believe, you have faith in it, you, you have they have your confidence. This reminds me of, of Daniel's prophecy where Daniel says that um, uh, with peace he shall destroy many, speaking of this kind of antichrist end time figure with peace, but it's speaking about really a, a, a systemic, this is a systemic thing. So we may be pointing out certain leaders, folks talking about, well, you think it's Obama, you understand, or you think it's Bush, or you think it was Reagan, or you think it's going to be Romney or whatnot, so forth. You're forgetting the big picture, right? So when folks talk about the New World Order is coming, this is your New World Order right here. This is your New World Order. See this? This is your new world order right here. This is your new world order. This is the new world order right here. And how do we know? Because when they came over here, the European foreigners, when they came to this country, and we can say stole it or annexed it or under false pretense, I mean, because the, 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 the king of England gave them charters, and then these very same people break away. There was no na nas nationalization for the early so-called Europeans that came over. Remember the narrative. Keep this in mind. Point about narrative. Keep this idea about narrative in mind. Because first they have to give you a narrative, a story. And one thing that we know about the Europeans, they are very good at entertainment, um, extremely good at make-believe, you know, at stories, dealing with um, feelings and emotion through their media and through their system of things. You understand? This is why when you look at the new narrative now, the new narrative is that slavery in America never really happened. And, and, and if it did happen, it wasn't you. It, it, it's, it's so far removed from you. They wonder why the economy is bad. How come the Western economy is bad? Don't you know that the majority of, of unrighteous Europeans, I'm speaking about those white folks that can't admit that Jesus Christ is black and submit to him in spirit and in truth. You understand? The majority of Europeans don't have really a work ethic. Yeah, they might have had it when they were Protestant, so forth and so on, when they all believe that narrative. Now they're free to do what they please. You understand? And then being free to do what they please, we're really seeing the real side of the so-called Anglo-American and the Europeans, and, and we're seeing the dark side. You say as soon as information becomes open and circulated, all these things that people didn't know that were going on for years and years, now it's all getting exposed. Yet, we find out that folks already knew this, and all of this was being suppressed for so long. With peace, King James says, he shall destroy many. But that peace, according to the royal Amharic of the Metaf Kedus, the book of the seven seals of Hila Selassie, that word for peace actually means, and we're speaking of this book right here, right? That word for peace is tam no win. In other words, confidence, faith, at its root, faith, through confidence. So what do most people, especially most Americans, especially Negroes, Blacks, and Coloreds, what do they have faith in? One will say, well, God, so forth and so on. And I, we would say, well, what is his name? 
and what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? Is it this God, this God right here where it says, it says right here, you get this right here? It says, in God we trust. Is it that God right there? Is it this one God? Is this the one God? Not even recognizing the true meanings, as the Moorish brothers would say, of these very symbols that's on this so-called currency. Currency, what is current? Current is the power, is energy. You know, they talk about two types of energy. Natural energy, you know, the coal, the gas, the raw material, so forth and so on. And then they speak about this sort of currency. You understand? This currency. Now, notice how these two forms of currency, one, they use this really meaningless. This way is not even worth the paper it's really printed on. And really, this is not really paper. This is magic. This is magic paper. This is not your ordinary printing paper. And if you watch any of the documentaries about money, they'll tell you that it's a very special brew, you understand, of ingredients that it takes. And these things are highly secret. You understand? And they say, well, it's because they don't want it to be counterfeited, so forth and so on. We all know that the major counterfeiter of this is this, because this is in itself, in principle, is a counterfeit. This is supposed to represent wealth. You understand? Originally, silver and gold and diamonds and, and raw materials, real wealth, God's creation wealth. But really, this represents nothing. This represents a promise. It's a promissory note. Now, how does all this connect with Charles Taylor? Well, we spoke about, just now, about the raw materials. You know, I was thinking about this, and I said, you know, Charles Taylor, you know, he wasn't a real pan-African sort of African leader. He wasn't really, you know, I didn't really hear him saying a whole bunch about our struggles as the lost sheep over here. I wasn't seeing him do a whole bunch of stuff on the continent, and not nearly compared to Haile Selassie and those great Pan-African leaders of the 60s. He's not in that particular class. Even Mugabe, you understand, amongst those of us who know, we don't think he's the best leader. But it's interesting as some of these guys, as if they live long enough, if they grow, they start to wake up. You know what I'm saying? They, they start to wake up in a way. And, and all that rage you see in Mugabe, for example, is because he was ass-kissing for all that time, and now he's beginning to really recognize the same movement that he and other Africans opposed that was based on the teaching of his Imperial Majesty, Haile Selassie I. Even Mandela, whose birthday came around today, I think he's in his 90s, Mandela is said to have said that if, if, the, if that generation from the 60s and 70s had only listened to Haile Selassie, if they only had continued to follow the teachings of His Majesty, Africa truly would be a new Africa, a better Africa, an Africa that we as black people of the world and at home and abroad could truly feel proud of and could identify with positively. Instead, whenever we see Africa, we see war or we see starvation or we see these European, Anglo-American Christian min uh, missionaries going over there and digging a well or building a shed or a house or a concrete cinder block, something, calling it a school, calling it a hospital, so forth and so on. And some would say, well, at least they're doing something. You see, those folks who say that don't really know true history. And that's one thing that has been awfully deprived of most folks. They have this documentary out there where they interview people and ask them just simple questions about politics, about who's who, about certain points of world history. And, and, and these regular average Americans are so, so stupid, so dumb, so unaware, so ignorant, and happily ignorant. So when we see in the news that Charles Taylor has 
been sentenced to 50 years for, for crimes against humanity as, as committing the so-called worst crimes or, quote, behind, as they say, the worst crimes in, in, in modern history since the Nazis. So they're saying that this particular African head of state, and, and, and we definitely don't say that, you know, he was a, a, a African head of state that we um, would have um, proactively supported. You understand? But then, if we look at the real crimes against humanity and the world leaders that are really behind, you know, the same things that they charge Charles Taylor with. And this is this now connects with the law. And this is why I, I said, let me just take a couple of moments and, and, and reason on this. Um, some of y'all will, will, will get it or have already gotten it. Others probably will get it later on. This is just a point to, you know, point of order. Be aware of this because this um, conviction of this so-called modern African leader who's been accused of crimes against humanity because he is said to have supported a, a, an insurgent group in, in his, his neighboring country in Liberia and in that, that region over there in West Africa which did horrible crimes, rapes and, and, and amputation of limbs and, and murders. But, but, but here's the interesting thing. They don't have any smoking gun. All they're saying is because he's a West African leader, and this is what we heard the judge, the, 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 the grudge, this European, and we don't know what, what are their credentials to sit on a world court. Who has the right to establish court? in the earth. Is it only the Europeans? Well, if you judge this precedent, you see, this is, this is very important. We've been talking about they're trying to take Africa back. We've been hearing everybody say they're trying to, a lot of folks were looking at what happened to Muammar Gaddafi and say, see, they tried to stop Gaddafi because of all the good Gaddafi was doing, so forth and so on. But I think it's even more significant. See, Gaddafi and Libya is going to turn out to be a mistake. And then some of y'all might recognize why we, you know, why we favored that. Because really, that will work out in our best interest as a people, as the once lost but now found Beta Israel. So, not to get into that particular point too much, but let's look at this Charles Taylor. They said that he is the first and the only one in modern times convicted of such a crime against humanity that's likened to the Nuremberg trials and the Nazis. Can you believe that? And yet there were no death camps that were run by him. In other words, he supported or he is said to have supported a particular group of people. It's like America supports certain groups around the world. At one time, Al-Qaeda was heavily supported, and Bin Laden even, we know, was even supported. No, you know, and, and, and this group was accused of doing a lot of terrible crimes. I mean, even 9-11, they say. Now think about it for a moment. Which one do you think is worse in the minds of most Americans? Why are they focusing so much on this small African nation? And is it something that Charles Taylor did as they tried to make us believe in their narrative, as they scapegoat him? You know what I'm saying? Or rather, is it something that Charles Taylor did not do? See, you have to recognize that that particular region of the world, in, in addition to it being the, the, the last point of, of egress or exit for our ancestors, the once lost but now found Beta Israel, for we Ethiopian Hebrews, they march Ethiopians across, across Africa, Beta Israel across Africa. That was the port. That was where business went on. That was also called the Ivory Coast. It was also called the Gold Coast. And today, we learn about blood diamonds, right? Now, who's behind this blood diamonds? You know, which particular companies? Is there a particular 
the ethnic group of people that are behind this whole diamond trade, both the so-called legal as well as the illegal. We hear that certain places in Africa, especially in West Africa, have minerals that the modern telecommunication mobile technological companies need in order to make their products. And, and this also has caused and fomented these warfares among people, Africans, who do not have the wit or wisdom or awareness. They are just on a survival mode. This is not to excuse them. This is just to recognize where they're at. You know, so who's behind that? So is it really that Charles Taylor rightly should be accused singularly alone? I mean, this is amazing. The people who've done these atrocities, those who have survived, they're still walking up and down over in West Africa. Now you get the so-called Africans, West Africans, French colonized and British colonized, and after all, even Liberia, in a sense, is an American corporation, if, if you think about it. So what offense did Charles Taylor do to his, his overlords, his, his British, French, and Anglo-American overlords. You see, so now that particular trial and the fact that they had Milosevic, I don't know if you know about this guy Milosevic, he was in Serbia and in Czechoslovakia and over there in, you know, where the Ten Kings come from. That's also part of the prophecy. When we look at the Czechoslovakia, Serbia, Bosnia, when we look into that region of the world, we find that there were these ten kings when the Roman Empire fell, places like Romania, you understand, and other places leading on up to what we call Russia today. So we have both a, 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 a biblical marker point, the ten kings, you know, the ten kings in, in Revelation, and also these ten horns, and we see in Daniel's prophecy and in Revelation, it's pointing to this particular region of the world, these particular people. So it's like this part of the world has come to life again, right? And with the massacre of, 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 of the Serbs and, and Bosnia and the Muslims over there and, and whoever was not the right ethnicity and the so-called right or the white um, so-called religion or faith. They were massacred right up there in Europe. They had the Milosevic guy in, in, in the world court for like years. And it was going back and forth and they were saying that it might be hard to convict him because of this or that, so forth and so on. Finally, they almost come up to a conviction of Milosevic and Milosevic dies. And they say, oh, he robbed them of the chance. Now they caught this other guy also who, who's Done, I can't pronounce his name right now, but you might hear about him. He's also in the world court, and he's standing up for tri standing um, trial, right, by this special body convened by God knows who. You understand? If anything, the Charles Taylor incident, it reminds us both of the failure to date of the African Union, as well as those of us in the diaspora who should be more actively aware, informed, aware, and involved in our homeland, in our motherland, in Africa. Those are fears concern us. You know, of course we have the black thing connection with it. But it goes deeper than that, my brothers and sisters. Why do you think all nations, the Chinese, the Indians, the Europeans, the Americans, you understand? Even I think some of the South Americans as well are all interested in Africa. Why? Because of the resources, because of the land, the resources. Plus, Africa is the, 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 the most solid um, land mass on the earth. In other words, compared to that's where the earthquakes and other things are coming from. So, you know, this is why in that movie, movie 2012, we see at the end of the movie the ship you know, is going to South Africa 
so-called Cape of Good Hope, so forth and so on. So they're already signaling that it's about Africa, even the adoption of these, these stars or celebrities or others in the spotlight adopting a little black African boy or girl or a few of them is really all about, this is to put a kindler, gentler face on white supremacy. But notice one thing. They can say all they can say, but the conditions, the conditions that affect black people, they have not changed. These conditions that still adversely affect us. Because in spite of whatever government program, whatever liberal democratic policies in America or even in Africa, the, the black man, woman, and child has to recognize that their present state our present state as a people, this cursed state, in other words, not being the head, but being the tail, is because of the curses for disobedience to Jah, to the God of Israel. And we, brothers and sisters, who recognize and know our Beta Israel and Ethiopian Hebrew identity, we are particularly culprit. You understand? Especially if we are unaware, if we're ignorant, if we're apathetic, if, if we cannot work in community, you understand, and, and in fellowship with other brothers and sisters of like mind to progress, to continue the work of the King of Kings and his Christ. It's like Rastafari has been in a state of inertia. It's like many ones have gone AWOL. You understand? It, it, it's it's time to, to to give a mercy to put mercy out there. To go, you know, the soldier goes AWOL. You know, that's 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 a, that's a high crime. You understand? That could cost the soldier his life. And one of the things we keep seeing, many of our young people, you understand, and, and and different ones in the movement, it seems like go before their time, so to speak or not fulfill their full potential or get caught up on some pecklewood cracker shit that usually has to do with law. It, it comes right, right, right around to law again. This is why we ask the question, who can set up courts? Look what the European Ashkenazi Jews did. First thing they did was get real estate. That's the first thing real estate. You see what I'm saying? Then they set up their own system of law. You understand? Now, the third aspect, the morality aspect, well, that is an Achilles heel for the European Jews, especially since they want to put themselves first and not debate to Israel first. You understand? Within the order of things, seeing that the black Jews of Ethiopia have a heritage that goes back 2,600 years, not a 400, you know, or even, if they want to say, it, uh, the Council of Jamina was about 70, 90 A.D. So you say 1,900 year, even if the modern Jews would like to trace their so-called tradition. But actually, it's more within the range of four to perhaps 600 or so years their present tradition of being European, Khazars, Edomite, so-called Jews. But I point out the Jewish example for, 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 for a point that who gave them the right to defend themselves, to say, never again, never again, it stops here. Who gave them that right? It was their own confidence and faith in themselves and the ideas about themselves and for many of them in what God spoke to them or what they believed God spoke to them. And guess what? They acted on this and to this very day they are continuing to act and in their own way for themselves are prospering by it. How often has Negroes, Blacks, and Colored say that 
black people are like the Jews. Black people should be like the Jews. And we see our black Jewish relationship, you understand, even here in America. You know, was, and that is very interesting, especially since most Negroes, blacks, and coloreds still are ashamed or afraid to admit they're ashamed of Ethiopia, just like the prophet says, Isaiah says, they shall be ashamed of Ethiopia, their expectation. And many of us are ashamed of Ethiopia. However, we should not be ashamed of our birthright as Ethiopians, as Hebrews, as Beit Israel. We should not be ashamed of the covenant, because that means if we're ashamed of the covenant, then we are ashamed of the blessings. And that means that this curse that you see, I mean, look at black folks all around the world. Every other people have the confidence in themselves and in their cause to keep fighting for what they believe is theirs by God and before man. But these Negroes, and you Negroes too, and we can say we Negroes, still looking, oh, what's Obama going to do? Oh, we get a black president, or, or if a next celebrity or somebody basketball player makes some more money, or an, another, another Wendy Williams get a talk show or a show on, oh, we're really making it now. Negro, you cannot buy your freedom. You know why you keep hearing that this year is like the 1860s? Do you know the 1860s? I was surprised to see a bit of Khalid Mohammed, the late Khalid Mohammed. May Jah have mercy upon his soul. And he was speaking in a lecture, and, and he brought up the 1860s and, and, and what had happened when black people did get so-called equal rights and opportunities in society. Did the white man compete with him? Did he um, prove himself by his, his work ethic or his virtue? No. The white man got guns, you understand, shot and killed and threatened and basically ran the black representation out of the, out of the, um, out of the, 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 the parliament, uh, not the parliament, but the, um, like in Louisiana, um, the Congress, the House, the, the ran them out, pushed them out by gunpoint, at gunpoint. Now, look, let, let, let us understand this. There is a reason for black, um, Negro, colored apathy. There is a very important reason. And too often, you know, too often we want to ignore this, and yet we'll gladly, you understand, be entertained by European or white Jews telling us about the Holocaust or about this one who experienced the Holocaust, or now so many of them are dying. Now they talk about the children. They're talking about their parents and what they experienced on the Holocaust, and we hear the violins and the sad music, and we recognize that, you know, because... You know, we are still the children of Jah. We're, you know, we're his true children. You understand? And it bothers us. You know, just, you know, wickedness. And it should, it should bother you. Because many of those who were Holocaust were not just Jews, but were Ethiopians, were black people. Black people were first. What do you think colonization in Africa was about? So when we see this article right here, I want to show you this, the Valley of the Dry Bones because the 1860s. This election is just like the 1860s, but getting back to Charles Taylor, so this, this whole Charles Taylor thing, you know, this, this whole world court thing, it's, it's, I would say a joke, but that might give people the wrong impression. Um, it's very dangerous, let me say, the precedent, because the precedent is being set by what just happened with Charles Taylor, where he's being blamed for the individual and group activity of many different folks who the majority of the survivors, perpetrators, 
are still alive, active, walking about, so forth and so on. You understand? But see, the white man, once again, this is the white man's burden. You understand? I mean, I mean, if all the indignities have a white European judge, I mean, and can the European judge why the world is the way it is right now? Why his people are so lazy? Why they they are not producing children? You understand? Why their their economies are in such high debt? You understand? And 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 the people don't want to um, austerity. You know, they they we, they cut welfare programs and other sort of job and community programs, social programs, not even the welfare, but the social programs to especially the black, the poor, and, and, and the black, Latino, even the poor white communities and the Hispanic communities as well, you know, they cut these programs, yet they have billions of dollars to spend it halfway around the world. You understand? And we often hear about the collateral damage and the number of innocent people being killed and some of the people that the Americans are working with. Many times they do a lot of things in America say, oh, we don't approve of that, so forth and so on, and then give them a big shipment of money, guns, and arms to fight against America's foreign enemies. So who's going who's gonna to take the ones responsible to the world court? Does the world court even have a docket for such things? Do you think so? Or do you think this is going to be like a kangaroo court? You understand, to make monkeys out of the Africans. And, I, and, and my earthly father, God bless his soul too, he's, he, the earthly one has, has passed and gone. But he left me with this particular article. I remember he gave me this year, back in 1993, this article by Paul Johnson. Once again, colonialism's back and not a moment, and not a moment too soon. I mean, this particular article, what I'm going to try to do is, is scan this, get this scanned, hopefully within the next, you know, three, four, just give I and I about seven days or so on, and you understand, to, to get this scanned um, and, 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 and put up there. Um, we got some highlights here, too, but it's so interesting. The basic idea behind this article is that Africans cannot govern themselves. That, that, that the independence and the revolutionary fervor of the 60s was a mistake. You understand? It was done too soon. But then we saw a, a very interesting legal, you know, we've been speaking about John Law. And when you start to learn John Law and love John Law, when you start to deal with man and people and Babylon's temporal law, your eyes are open. You start to see things there that you didn't see before. You start to perceive things, the mechanics, and also the tricks that they play. And so this particular um, conviction of Charles Taylor, is it for what he, he allegedly did or who he allegedly supported? Basically they're saying that he supported some guys who were, who were committing atrocities. Instead of bringing a case against him, and the connection, the real connection between who's who. They're just saying, well, since he was the president, prime minister, or the president of his country, and he was in charge, and he's a, and I thought this was interesting. The judge said, a West African leader. You see, because Europe is seeking to use mischief, use the law mischievously. You understand? In other words, say that this African leader, though I don't think he's a, he was a good or a great leader by far. I think, he, I think he's done wrong things as a leader. But then to put him on the par with the, the Nazis, you understand? And, and, I mean, this is a mockery. And he said this is a new precedent. You know what a precedent means? Law is governed by case history. Case history. So now... They can go in any other nation. Uh, you think they're going to do it in America? You think they're going to they're going to take some of these governors and mayors and other local people right here and bring them to the world court for committing any crimes or atrocities? You think they're going to do it in, in 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 Europe or in anywhere else around the world? No, not at all. No, this is to make a point, and this is part of a grab 
for Africa. So the Africans begin to think not the true narrative, but in this new narrative. Oh, we got our freedom, but then when we got our freedom, look what some of our black brothers did to us. And we pushed away the white man. We need the white man here because he is a good arbitrator of fairness and justice. And you don't recognize, why is the white man really all up in Africa? Most of the reasons for most of the Europeans and the Americans are very selfish reasons. And for many of them, not all, but the majority of them are selfish reasons and is an exploitative reason. You know, the shame of it is this. Many of them are there to make money in Africa, plain and simple. The Europeans, the Chinese, the other nations are there to make money. You understand? Know there to, to increase their profit or make their wealth there. And silly Negroes, blacks, and coloreds, so-called Negroes here, talking about they're looking for a job, so forth and so on. The same white guy that can't find a job. He said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to Africa. You say, I'm going to check out Africa, or I'm going to work with some company that's doing something in Africa. You know, then I'll get some companies to back me, or, or so forth. And, and they're looking for ones and ones. In fact, they would send a lot of us over there, you understand, because they just need boots on the ground. Because that is the, it's always been, you know, the gem on the face of the planet Earth, the best land, the, the richest land, the richest culture, and the richest people in, it, in, in their true God-given state. But see, the so-called Africans are not in their true, natural, God-given. They're not in their inalienable state. They're in a foreign mind. And, 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 and it's so clear just when you, you know, when you, check, when you check it out for yourself. So this article right here, it says, let's face it, some countries are just not fit to govern themselves. You understand? So they've been seeking to build this narrative. You understand? Build this narrative. Like even the Rwanda thing. And what's so interesting, a lot of the tribal warfares, the tribal skirmishes and the tribal warfare has a lot to do with the white man's new world order. With, with his imperialistic and and, and colonial exploitation in Africa. In fact, I heard the, the military guy that used to be the military guy, he's at Marion something college now. He, he, he was something Gates, and he was talking to Charlie Rose, and he was talking about Libya. He said, he said whenever you see straight lines on a map, you understand they're, they're artificial. He said that Churchill, Winston Churchill, you know, must have just like, like while being semi-inebriated, because Churchill liked to, to drink, you know, he's the alcohol, you know, the alky. You know, Winston Churchill, you're a great politician. In fact, he's only a great politician because he, he, he got some gravity by learning from the example of majesty, of a, of, of, of a, of a, of a true, a true um, statesman. From Hila Selassie. That's the only reason. That's that's part of the story you haven't been told. But anyway, Churchill was one of the ones, amongst other Europeans, that actually drew on maps these these countries that we have today. So if we look in the Arab so-called world and in North Africa and throughout Africa, all of, when you look at the map and you look at at what what, what one country is and these all that's artificial, and and that is the first thing that needs to be rectified for a truly new Africa, the peoples themselves, if, the, if, if you want to give the peoples democracy, allow them the right to define their own borders. But a lot of these countries that we have in Africa today are part of the, the, the rollover from um, colonial times. You know, but then only a few nations really have have fought for their freedom. Many of them were were given um, um, freedom in that quote unquote sense. And here's what I want you to get to check this out about the law. Anyway, the, the whole Charles Taylor thing 
it, it, it is it's a scapegoating thing right there. And it's not to say Charles Taylor is, is, is not one of many who should be on trial. But they are pointing this out because they're trying to get a precedent for Africa. You understand? And they're trying to send the signal. I mean, I mean, look at the Muslims. The Muslims are talking about their own system of law, Sharia, right? It's a big controversy. Some Americans say we don't want that over here. But in many different countries, in England, the Muslims have Sharia law. The Jews within their Jewish communities, they also have their insular system of law. Sometimes they go before the Gentiles, but, but, but not too often. They, they'll go before the Gentiles to sue a Gentile, but it's not too often that they were being Orthodox Jews. They have their own law. You understand? They have their own code. In a lot of different communities, too. You understand? They have their own way of doing things. You know, the, y'all into the gangster movies, the Italians, the, the Italians. Don't they have their own way of doing things, the so-called mafia? They have their own culture and system. But now look at Africa, especially West Africa. And we've been watching a lot of the so-called African movies from time to time. And every time they have these court scenes, you see these Africans making monkeys out of themselves with these bad wigs on. Not even understanding where the wig really actually comes from the, the Sinocephalus ape or the monkey, the so-called Ethiopian, that red heart monkey, but they don't understand the real inner connections with that. But be that as it may, their whole systems are all foreign. The foreigners have given them their, 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 their they're living in the image of the beast. They're, they're living in a foreign mind. Now, legally, what's that called? Artificial. So they're not in the natural person. So that means they're not in pro, propia, in propia persona sujuris. They are not their proper person before law. Because we were asked the question, how come Charles Taylor was not um, put on trial before the African, an African Union court, or even, or even in his country? Why not? Wouldn't that be more justice? I mean, would they allow um, Bush to get snatched from his ranch and taken to the world court, even though many countries have endorsed such, if it were possible, or if they had the moral, the international morality to do so? This is, this is the plot. This is the trick. You're going to see a lot much more of it. And this article right here gives some very... In fact, when I first read it, I, 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 you know, I apologize if I could, you know, to my earthly, because I, I, I read it, I got it, but I didn't get it. You know, when you get it, but you don't really get it. Now, in, in reading it again, there's a couple of things that stand out in particular. There's one thing that I wanted to touch on, something called trusteeship. And, you know, we've been speaking on the law, right? You know, the law and on birthright and nationality and, and, and sovereignty. These are big issues, right? These are big issues. Because they, they even mention Somalia, Liberia. They mention Haiti. They mention um, Zaire. You know, they mention Zaire as well. And they say something here in this article. Remember, they gave they gave um, Charles Taylor, and then look at that. He's an African man for European name. Now we're not saying that he he did not, you know, get himself into this situation. You, you see, because he was working for those European, and somehow he thought that by being a so-called world leader, or you know, an African leader, and the, the tenure he had. He didn't think that they would make a monkey out of him. Well, they're making a monkey out of him, but this is to build a legal basis for more European, you understand? Know and speaking of European, United Nations, but more over the European Union, as well as America, so forth and so on, because they're trying to stop the tide of China. You see, they, they're seeking to compete with these resources, both human, 
as well as mineral and resources from the earth with China. See, so this uh, sentencing and the narrative that's being spun, the narrative that's being spun is to say, listen, when you blacks had like 30 years, 40 years, or whatever, you Africans, do it for yourself. Now, the biggest failure of modern Africa is the lack of sustainable and purposeful involvement with that progress of modern Africa by our kind, by African so-called American, by Ethiopian Hebrews, by Rastafari, by, by, by the whole collective, the Moors, we can include the Moors, we can include even the nation of Islam, you understand, you know, in, in that same sort of agenda. It's like we are stuck, you see, and we are stuck here, you understand, if we don't go through birthright. Because if you don't go through birthright, that means you were birthed wrong, you see. And already from the status of law as it is, most of us have been birthed wrong. That we think we're natural people, but legally speaking, we're artificial persons. We are the creation of an amendment by law. And all of our rights truly are not human rights in practice, but are only civil rights. So here with the world court decision, they're saying that an African, right, and the Africans can do the same thing the Nazis did. So look forward to that narrative is going to be spun more and more, unless some of you all out there who understand this media craft can spin the true narrative that we're trying to give some voice to right here. But there's, there's so many moving parts. There's a lot of moving parts to this. And this was just to, to get this out, to say, yo, <laughs> did you see what just went on there? That is a, that is a big point, this, this, this recolonization. The re the NWO recolonization of Africa is connected with, with what we're seeing happen with Charles Taylor. Even the name Charles, if you think about it, you know the name Charles is also um, very significant as well. You know. Now, um, let's get to that point about trusteeship. If we can find it right here, I don't know if I highlighted it. I was reading this article here, and it talked about trusteeship. And when I read this here, I said, wow, the same thing they do on the local and national level is also the same legal mischief. And see, the legal mischief can only be done because ones are in, not in their proper person before law. So they really, they are outside of law. You know saying they have to be represented, in other words, by another. You ever wonder about that? How come a lot of white folks can represent themselves in court, Europeans, in other words, and even other nations can represent themselves, or they have representatives truly of their own kind, right, who have a greater idea of international law in addition to, you know, local constitutional jurisdictional um, law. And whenever we have a black person, there's no real indictment. They don't go through that process. They go straight to adjudication. That means that that status has already been waived. You understand? It's not a natural person. No need to deal with them as a proper person before law because they're a 13th, 14th Amendment artificial person. They're basically a corporate entity. You understand? They belong to the federal government, and that all began after after um, the Civil War with the first birth certificates that were issued expressly to keep track of the newly, quote, freed from slave masters' hand black population, but so that the slaves wouldn't get out of hand, they needed to keep them in, closely tied to the government. This is one of the reasons why to this very day if you look at our struggles here in America, in the wilderness, and you look at 
other people's struggles around the world. It's like everyone is saying, we get so much courage to fight for our human rights because of what y'all have done, black people. A lot, of, a lot of different groups have said this openly. But then think about it. Have we really struggled for our human rights or do we limit ourselves to civil rights? And there's a very important legal reason for that. So this, this trial with um, Charles Taylor, it actually lays the ground, right? It actually lays the ground for um, imperialism, probably what, 2.0? You understand, when you talk about the New World Order, we're already in the New World Order. Anybody that thinks a new world order is coming and we're not already in, we are already in a new world order. See, what a lot of these folks, conspiracy, realist theorists, scientists, so forth and so on, what they really don't recognize is that when they came to this new world and they set up this, this experiment, this experiment and the success, you can see the success of this experiment, you see it every day. You, 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 you touch it. You come into contact, you understand, with the success of this particular experiment. You understand? People might not know anything else in any other language, but they recognize this particular currency. And, for the most part, they value this particular currency almost by far above any other currency. Is it because this is the most attractive dollar bill and so forth and so on? No, there's a, there's a bigger, more prophetic reason for that. Um, let me see if I can find this. I was, I was looking for this. It was talking about something called trusteeship, right? Something called, oh, here we go, trusteeship. Yeah, we found it. Trusteeship. Now, some other brothers out there on the YouTubes and elsewhere, they have some vids on this. I know Tyreek Bay has touched on this. I think Anoop and others have touched on this when speaking about um, the law and, and status and, and ward of state. It comes under the ward of state um, reasoning, especially the Moorish, the Moorish um, enlightenment and knowledge on that. Now, here... In this article from 1993, colonialism's back and not a moment too soon. With this conviction of, of, of uh, Charles Taylor, they're setting a precedent establishing as a first case, you understand, to give them a legal basis, you understand, to override um, the continental sovereignty of Africa and not to be seen in the same light of their forefathers as, as colonizers or as so-called imperialists. Now they can cleverly use the humanitarian sort of an argument, you know, within a, a, a we are the world sort of an argument. It's, the, it's a kinder, gentler white supremacy. So it's not a new world order, it's actually they're trying to find the perfect upgrades to sustain this system, you understand, to sustain this present illusion, but to fortify it, you understand, to stabilize it, because it's very, very, it's still very unstable, but they are, they are they're working at this because what else do they have? Think about it for a moment. What else do they have? You understand, there's truly no heaven for them. You understand, there's no paradise for them. This is their paradise. I mean, how else could they live in the lap of luxury, recognizing that's because of the exploitation of other people? Now, you know, we, we look at Charles Taylor was like Noriega. Remember the Noriega situation where um, um, Papa Bush, you understand, who some say, some research and evidence has been put out there that purports that he was like, either in bed with Noriega or Noriega was in bed with him, but that uh, at some point Noriega was his asset. And as soon as Noriega said, nah, then it became like he is the greatest threat in the Western, to the Western Hemisphere. 
and they marched armies down there basically to capture, arrest him, and from what I hear, Noriega is still in jail. Well, now look at this. Charles Taylor, he's to be sentenced for 50 years. But where is he to be sentenced? In his home country? In some African nation? No! In England. England is going to foot the so-called 50-year bill for Charles Taylor's imprisonment as the single cause, right, the single cause of all of the wrongdoing that occurred. How silly can Africans be? Well, we know they can be very silly, because otherwise they would have never, ever sold our ancestors or betray them or allow them to be sold, and they wonder why there's a brain drain in Africa. You understand why it's always so-called the white folks that are coming in there, or the few and very few black people that recognize the, the, the value of being involved on the African continent. It's the place to be. You understand? It's the place to be. The corporations are trying to get there. Many of your churches and some of the other European 700 clubs, they're trying to be there. Now the big powers need a justification. You understand? Since there's still a, 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 a memory of, of colonialism and even neo-colonialism, they need a justification. Now this sentencing gives them the biggest opportunity. Now, don't think I'm saying that Charles Taylor, I think his hands are clean. But you know, it's like, it's like sentencing Pontius Pilate, right, for all of the crimes of Rome. You know, you know it's, like, it's like, you know, the Rome, Mystery Babylon, the Roman Empire. Right? Can you just blame one person? It's, it's making a devil out of a, a man. And in a sense, it's making an international devil out of a black man to give the younger, more impressionable generation, especially of Africans, the false belief that white folks may have done, and Europeans and Americans and foreigners, for Rinjoch, they may have done bad things in the past. They didn't know, you know, but they stopped that. And now they're helping us to get rid of bad black guys or bad black leaders. As though to say that you Africans, y'all can't even, uh, uh, y'all can't even do anything for yourselves. Why? Why is it that situation in Africa? Because the Africans still do not recognize, one, that the injustice done to us has left a curse on that particular land. They have to become conscious of it. You see what I'm saying? When we talk about reparations, you see what I'm saying? When we talk about reparations, what about the reparations that were never given? And they wonder why the economy is bad. You wonder why Europeans are so lazy? I mean, they are lazy. I mean, look at them. I mean, they're, they're too lazy to really work and invent stuff. You understand? They just want to, like, you know, live like the West. You know, I'm talking about the majority, not the, the few and the chosen amongst them, the others who rise above that, that lower mentality. They can only have a work ethic if they're stealing and robbing, enslaving, or colonizing and using great brutality and force against the nation. You see, so once that back was broken by the King of Kings, once that back of white supremacy was broken, you understand, you've seen Europe in apathy, and it still is an apathy. You understand, it still is an apathy. But they figure they can work out their financial and economic situation, plus closer to home, in the Roman Empire, Africa was the breadbasket for the Roman Empire. In other words, during the time of the Roman Empire, the majority of their good food and the food and some of the basic staple like wheat came from Africa. So this is nothing new, you see. But the first thing 
is to set a lawful parameter, you understand, to, to convince the people of your system of justice. And now many have been taken and lulled into this false confidence, sharing the so-called sentencing of Charles Taylor as though now he's gone, all of this will go away. What they don't recognize is that, and I didn't even recognize this before, that Charles Taylor actually is not what he did. Like so many of those who have been in bed with the system, so to speak, is what he did not do, or what they expected or thought he would do, and he did not. It's like the sacrifice, not sacrifices he did, was a sacrifice he did not do, and obviously it got him in that same situation. So we look at Charles Taylor to be um, um, Europe, in particular England's um, Noriega. You know what I'm saying? England's Noriega. But on the tr trusteeship, it says that trusteeship was a notion derived from English common law, from English common law, in which a child was made a ward a ward of the court. Now they say ward of state, but you can see the connection. So a child is made a ward of the court until attaining the age of 21. Until attaining the age of the what? 21st century. You, you, see, the, you, see, the, you see the link right there? It has first been applied to a territory in 1899 when Britain, with Egypt, created the Anglo-Egyptian Sudan, known as a condominium. They called the Sudan at that time a condominium. Now, you, you know what a condominium is, right? A condominium is a place you buy into, you own a share of it, so forth and so on. It's like a house, but more like an apartment, a glorified apartment, right? That's the general idea. But this condominium was actually applied to an entire African landmass, in particular here, Sudan, which was known as a condominium. The aim being, now listen to this, the aim being to train cadres or cadres, in other words, to train for them disciples who would eventually lead it to independence. In other words, train others to live in their image, to adopt their civilization, even in blackface, to adopt their civilization. And it's those who would, therefore, lead the people to, quote, the independence that would still keep it in line with its former colonizers and the enslavers of their forgotten brothers and sisters, those of us in the West. Now, this British notion was that, that there was no such thing as a colony in perpetuity. The British, and, and remember, this is all connected with what occurred during the Civil War. After the Civil War, they recognized, well, maybe this idea of having a colony forever. They learned that also in India or Hindia, the same thing. So they, they created a different, a different contract, you understand? Instead of making this a contract of, 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 of the level, of, we would take this as a colony forever, they recognized by being in that business of, of being colonizers that eventually people will outgrow that. And if they still want to benefit, you know, like they want to benefit from the Americans, so forth and so on, with the whole tea thing and the import export and the Americans did not want to give the English a cut. They said, Thank you very much, but we're doing all the work. We want to keep everything for ourselves. So even though the English sent them over there, over here as a colony, you see that right there? That tells you a lot about the about the mentality of the civilization we're dealing with. Everything they have done, including slavery, and colonization has always been in their best interest. Not in what's the best interest for everyone. They speak in that language, that narrative, but what they really mean, what is in the best interest of us, 
of wheat. You know what I'm saying? And you might think that we're living in a post-racial age, but we're not. We're not. As this campaign goes on with, with Barack Obama uh, up against um, uh, Mitt, Mitt Romney or uh, Mitt Romney, Mitt Rome, me, Rome's me. I, I don't know if there's anything to that right there, you know, but the Mormon, you know, it's going to come up more. We're going to see a lot much more of this, but let's get this idea of trusteeship. So the British notion that there was no such thing as a colony in perpetuity, but that all territories would become independent when they were ready for it. In other words, this is the idea of the so-called great white father or the so-called Great White Mother, like Great Britannia. You understand? That when her colonies are ready, she will free them, and she will give them their free dumb, right? Not their free nest, but their free dumb, right? They'll be, they'll be free until they're dumb. But all territories will become independent when they were ready for it. And who would determine when they are ready for it? Well, of course, the lords and ladies. You understand? They're lords. Not the Lord you think, so that's a whitewash there too. They, they, they show that to you. So at every turn of it, spiritually, you understand, intellectually, and then physically, you know, adopting their, I mean, clothing is one thing. Clothing can be a minor thing. But adopting these clothing as identifying our value, worth. So that you see more and more, even Africans, even in the continent, long for and desire Western clothing. Perhaps because of the hip-hop videos and, and the media.